There's nothing much to say about Ben Hogan's life other than it was just short of miraculous. He is the definition of character, drive, and work ethic from almost dying in a car accident and protecting his wife to winning multiple major championships after he is looked upon as one of the greats in our game. Today I am going to diagnose his swing and in this diagnosis I will attempt to reveal to you why his swing was so phenomenal but yet so unattainable. His five lessons publication to golf has a cult following which includes includes instructors trying to apply his motions to Joe Public. And unfortunately, this translates into the developments of frustrated golfers looking to apply his magic move. The problem is, it was his magic move and no one else's. If you get some enjoyment or education out of this video, please support us by liking, commenting, sharing, and even subscribing as we donate proceeds from the channel to the Hill Hood Foundation for low-income children to get them into golf. But enough of the shenanigan talk, let's get ready to diagnose the swing of the great Ben Hogan. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode. Now, before I upset all the Ben Hogan fans out there, let me just get this straight. I'm a huge fan of his and really admire his motions and swings. However, he was known to practice from sunup to sundown for a reason. I've heard two different stories of his upbringing. One had him start this game left-handed as he found a left-handed club, then transitioned to right-handed. The second story is a source claiming he was left-handed and found a right-handed club, which the latter has been more accepted story, which according to the publication The Search for the Perfect Swing, a book I highly recommend, attributes left-handed people who play golf right-handed can contribute to uncontrolled hooks, which Hogan suffered from in his early years. It was through multiple studies and methods that Hogan created his swing he was most famous for currently, and bottom line, it was created to fight off rope hooks. But let's take a deeper look. On the left side of the screen, what we can see is a setup that is not what we see in modern day golfers, but something I actually like for the average golfer. So Hogan's body work was phenomenal. He does a lot of great things, a lot of rotation. What got Hogan in trouble and what I see most amateurs get in trouble is trying to duplicate this magic move that he had. Now he'd had this magic move because of his arm plane. His arm plane was very low, very shallow, very hard to release correctly. And he had to hold off that release and get his whole body through post impact. And what we can see is I'll show you this move. So bear with me, but don't get me wrong. If you can copy Hogan's body work, Work, it is phenomenal. So because he has got that golf ball more on his center line, you can see that I drew a purple line to match that golf ball right through his center. It is connected to his shoulder tilt. However, his tilt is connected ahead of the golf ball. So you will see some lateral motion left to make that golf ball more in line with the center of his body. However, because his golf ball is centered with his chest currently, when he makes that move, it's going to move his golf ball in this region closer to his right shoulder, which is what I believe he wanted to accomplish. Because when that club is on the right side, you typically block golf balls or miss them right. So this could have helped him fight those hooks. On the right side of the screen, we see a slightly higher setup than modern day golfers. Usually we see 90 degrees right in this area over here. But for him, because he had to get a lot of rotation to hold off that release, and I'll explain a little bit later, this is why he stood up a little bit taller so he can turn much harder and prevent that lower back injury. Let's go to the left side of the screen on the way back. We're gonna take it to the midway point. We can see the triangle is a decently wide triangle angle hands are still in the center of the chest which is great we don't see any sliding of the arms is what you can notice is that club is already at parallel on the right side of the screen we can see that same position here so we have that connected turn and the club it's very hard to pick up here it's right somewhere over here so it's pretty close to that lower plane line so first part of the takeaway is really solid we can see on the left side of the screen his right brace line he's holding inside his right brace line so it's very simple takeaway this is where i see a lot of people try to emulate this move starting here as they get that right elbow tucked to the body and what we can see from this position is he's still in his spine angle golf ball still connected to that spine angle so everything is looking pretty good you see the right hip is actually turning closer to the target which is great this is that rotation that we're talking about definitely gets a lot of body turn and on the right side of the screen we can see at that top of the swing his arms are relatively low compared to where they should be based on his setup now what attributes that is that right elbow we can see that right elbow is getting tucked to his body i see so many swings being destroyed by putting the club head under that right elbow, trying to emulate this motion. Unless you can have a body turn like Hogan, it's not gonna work for you. You're just gonna be a disaster because you're gonna flatten that plane out. And the more you flatten that club out, the more your hands and arms rely upon you if you cannot turn. And most of us cannot turn because we don't stretch or work out enough to do so. And we get a good sign of his arms going very low because that club shaft goes right through his head. 
if he, if his arms were higher, that club shaft would, you would see some spacing between the hands and the head, giving a little bit more room for the arms to work independently, which is something I highly stress for the average player. Now on the right side of the screen, if we draw from his grip down, we can see his hand in terms of positions on his body is pretty good. So if we go from his elbow, it's kind of hard to see with that shadow work to elbow. If we draw a line that goes right through the center of that, I don't know this isn't exactly, but that's basically where they're going to intersect each other. And there's a reason why we draw that line is just to see that triangle and how it acts on the downswing if he retains that same angle. And let's take a look on the way down. So on the right side of the screen, we're going to pull the arms down. You can see that triangle is working down to that line. And right here, we can actually see it still intersect that triangle. So he does a pretty good job of keeping that triangle connected, going straight down that path. Now, in order to do that, if you notice his right elbow, it is basically connected to his right side of his body. And this is that magic move that everybody's trying to learn and, and teach. And unless you have a body like Hogan, who wasn't a big man standing at 5'7", 5'8", 130 pounds soaking wet, fairly long arms and normal that can get away with this position and hits thousands of golf balls a week. This is a move that I do not recommend you do. Body work is fantastic. You can see he's still in his spine angle. He's rotating this very quiet feet. He's pushing and turning without jumping all over the place. On the left side of the screen, we can see that same position. So we get that right elbow you can see it's already tucked so the right elbow is leading the way and this is very similar to skipping stones on the on the lake or side throwing in baseball you want to get that elbow to lead and this helps you lower your club so all of a sudden you see how low that club is it is going right through the center of his head and now the problem with this is the amount of immediate rotation at impact needed to square things up and that's the problem i see with people trying to use this motion is have a tough time squaring the golf ball up in time now if we go back a little bit let's look at his motion so we see that slight move left so obviously he's trying to get the weighting over to the left side which is something he does really well so that right hip stays grounded so there's the top of his swing, right hip stays grounded, is pushing back. So phenomenal weight distribution, excellent turning. Now, as you can see, once it gets down to impact, look where that golf ball is now in relation to his body, pretty close to that right shoulder. So again, this is to help delay the closure of that club face to prevent the rope hooks. Now, in order to square that club face up, watch the hands. We're going to look at the hand release. So from here to here, look at how much of the hands have to now release down at impact. A, because that golf ball is behind, so he has to get them to activate more. And then past impact, look at how much of the body is moving. So it's almost a little bit backwards. He gets hands to catch up to make sure he strikes that golf ball. He's pressing into it. So does a great job of striking down into it. Once he strikes it, look at the body. So the body now catches up to the hands. So this is a little bit reversed. He made it work. He made it work fantastically. And if you want to emulate this, make sure you look exactly like Ben Hogan, because if you don't, it's not going to work for you. Right side of the screen, we can see now that triangle. The triangle here is open so late in the swing that he has to get his hands and arms to close that gap. So next frame, it's completely closed. Frame after, you can start to see some. Let me remove this line here. We can see that gap between his arms. So in three frames, it went from big gap, square, small gap. So this is a lot of late second manipulation with the hands and arms to square up because of that ball placement shift. Now you'll also notice that his hand path finishes much higher. Next frame up here, look at that triangle now. Look how much higher it is and how much further out, meaning it is further this way. So his hands and arms go from pretty flat to pretty steep. And that just shows you he's trying to hold off on a release. He's trying to hold off on a block just to not make that ball go left. So everything in this golf swing was built for anti-left. For us, we don't need a swing that's built anti-left because we have a hard time hitting it left. We want to promote left. We want to promote release. And most of this stems in with the setup and also the use of his hands being tucked to his body. So please, if I see somebody with head covers underneath their arms, I'm going to come and rip it out from you and say, protect yourself. It is his swing and his swing only. Sure, there are some of the people that swing close to this, but I'm not going to go teach Jack Nicklaus's motion, even though he won that many majors. I'm not going to teach Ben Hogan's motion. I'm not going to teach Tiger Woods motion. I'm going to teach your motion and how you need to work correctly for you. So I hope that helps you. I hope that educates you a little bit. And I know I'll probably upset a few of you Ben Hogan fans out there. And I do apologize. But again, this is just my humble opinion. Hopefully I'll see you next time. Fairways and Greens.